What is that, my peeply peeps? I know I was a bad creator last week. My week just, oh, hold on. Hi ladies, how you doing? What are you doing? A big guy right there, a big Rhode Island red. There he comes. Come here, Colonel. That is Colonel Sanders. I mean, why not? <laughs> This is a light Brahma here. Um, she's a black Australor. A couple of the brown girls are uh, Easter Eggers and then the white and gray bird there. I don't know, one of them lay blue eggs, one of them lay green eggs. I think the brown ones lay the green eggs and then the gray and white birds lay the, the blue eggs. So anyway, last week just got wrecked, man. I lost a whole day, I had to take Mia back. She had to go home, she had to go back to school. So I had to drive her back home. Well, we met them halfway, which was always nice. Thank you guys. Midway through the week, <sighs> my youngest son's Jeep started doing weird stuff. Took that into the dealership to get it looked at. And it's an old Jeep, it was an 05 uh, Wrangler. They couldn't make it recreate the problem. We couldn't make it recreate the problem. And then it was kind of a, one of those, he's changed jobs. So he's doing a job now where he's driving every day. For him, it was it was time to, to not drive a Jeep Wrangler with 33 12 and a half tires on it around town. That's a gas guzzling machine right there. Kind of spent most of the rest of the week finding and then, and then trading in and purchasing a new car that's more fuel efficient for what he's doing. <sighs> That's my excuse. That's all I got. So that's why I didn't do a video. Just, it is what it is. <laughs> Hold on. See that? I love to watch them dig around. Hey, ladies doing? The chickens are molting. As you can see, he's down to one nice, big, beautiful tail feather there. But you can see his smaller blue, you're not gonna be able to see it on camera, but his smaller tail feathers that are coming back in now are like an iridescent kind of blue, green, black color. Quite beautiful. That being said, with winter on its way, white death as we like to call it, it's time to clean this mess out. <sighs> Uh, it is what it is and it is exactly that it is a mess this is kind of our brooder and the reason it's time is now for me to get this cleaned out jeez i got stuff everywhere Ugh. It is because you guys know we've had issues with fox all year i've had issues with everything this year jeez this was the garden so that's going to make take most of the winter to get that back to quasi usable just time 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 guys you guys know we had the fox issue so I'm gonna actually add to the top of this fence, this little perimeter fence that goes around there. I've placed some metal pieces that we had left over from the barn build on the fence. They kind of buffer in the wind, flow back and forth. So if the fox is kind of sneaking up here and those dangle in the wind, they make a little bit of noise too. And that's been doing a pretty good job of keeping him out. However, he has managed to get in here once or twice. We started this year with 40 chickens and I think we have 17 remaining. Uh, what the fox will do is he'll come in here. You guys tell me if I'm wrong, if it's not a fox, whatever it is, he'll come in here and kill five or six and then he'll take one with him. And then I always pick up the carcasses, but I assume if I left them, he would just come back in the night and take them back or her to their den. Because of that, we added the Easter Eggers, uh, but we did lose a couple of those as well. And then we have 18 more in the basement that we have on the brooder. And when I say brooder, I mean, it's, it's like this in the basement, like this set up here in the basement, but with a light in it. Uh, and we just grow them out down there. I don't know if you heard that, but the reason we have to cage them when they're small outside of the fox is I hear right out there somewhere, a red tail hawk. I don't know if the camera's gonna pick that up, but that's him calling right there. And they'll just swoop in here and smash them and then basically knock them unconscious or break their back and then start eating them when they're still alive. Red tail hawk and for us is a migratory bird and I'm not allowed to shoot it. That's why we started going with the brooder method. We used to just let the moms hatch the chicks in the barn and then, cause it's adorable. When, when mom runs out of the barn and eight or 10 little baby chickens follow her around the yard and they're just scratching and stuff and pretending to eat bugs or whatever. I don't know what the relationship is with the crows. Crows do not like the hawk and they will chase them out of the area. The crows do like the fruit garden or what's left of it. So I don't mind the crows eating some fruit and chasing the hawks off. So that's, that's all cool to me. They don't eat that much. All that being said, if you guys know what to do. Go hit all the buttons, like, subscribe, thumbs up, leave some comments, tell a friend, tell a neighbor, tell a stranger. But today this gets cleaned out. And what we're gonna do is, and if you haven't watched it, go back and check out the sheep and goat barn is the same thing. It's deep litter method. It's a process of putting down dry bedding and then letting the chickens defecate in that. And then we just keep adding thin layers of dry material and then they poop in it. The bacteria breaks down, it kicks off heat. It's the same thing. And I often text my dad and I'll say, you know, hey, it's 
20 degrees outside and my barn's at 45 or 50 degrees in here. We'll close off the windows. There's insulation in the walls. We'll leave this big door just slightly cracked open. So at night, it, that's when it's most important to me is at night. Uh, when the sun comes up, the chickens are going to come out anyway and peck around in the grass. But if I can get this barn up to 50 degrees at night on a 20 degree night, very, very rarely does this little, this little cubby fall under freezing. I've never had frostbite. I've never had anybody freeze to death in here. It works really well. This chicken coop, if you will, don't mind my weeds everything is outrunning me this is a 12 by 24 building and the big double doors there is tool shed from here over we built on for the rabbit barn so that's rabbit barn in there this is chicken coop so i believe this is 8 or 10 by 12 total it's a little messy right now gonna happen uh, but we're gonna get it cleaned out i just built this wall right here when the barn was brand new put insulation in the walls one really important thing i don't even know if i'm gonna be able to show you see these holes right here and there's holes on the other side ventilation when you when you do deep litter method in a small space like this you're gonna have moisture the chickens are breathing that's creating moisture the breakdown of the actual litter is moisture when that rises up if it's not ventilated where you're gonna end up with is you're gonna have condensation on everything and it just it just creates a bad environment I had a little bit of problem because of the fox these girls are a little nervous to sleep in here they've been sleeping up here so he can't get to them even though they don't realize that the you know at night the door is closed and he can't get in any way but they they sleep up here so they've been pooping up there sleeping up here normally they love these and i have a natural roost over here and you guys probably already saw this roost out here this roost right here will normally live right here this is propped up because these were baby chickens that we released out of there a couple weeks ago. I left that open. That's their safe space because I brought them out here. They lived in that cage for two weeks. Now they know this is home. This is where they return. This is what's safe. So they'll come back to that area. So I like to leave that propped up a little bit just so they can get in under there and feel like they're safe in there. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to clean all this out. It's going to be a few wheelbarrow loads. We'll scrape down the walls, get all the cobwebs out. I don't know what else to tell you guys. Uh, we keep all their food in there. These are my homemade nesting boxes here. No, oh, there's a little one in there laying right now. Hi, lady. You laying me an egg or you laying on some eggs? A couple eggs down there. Yeah, I guess let's just get to it. So all the feathers you see laying around here, that's actually from the chicken molting. If you're not familiar with what birds do when they molt, it's the same as like when your dog sheds their winter fur for summer. Chickens go through a molt process before winter and replaces all their feathers. So their feathers will fall out and they'll be replaced with new feathers. So yeah, so that's what we're gonna do today. We'll get this cleaned out, get everything set up, get nice dry bedding down there and we'll bring up the uh, baby chicks from the basement and get them ready to get adjusted to the climate because they've been living in the basement for a few weeks. It's like 55 degrees all day, every day down there. Get them out here, get them in the weather. We'll do the same thing. We'll just lock them in that closure there probably for a few days probably not two weeks because I should have had them out here a week ago already Like everything else. I'm behind on that as well. I'll just stop talking. We'll just get to working <laughs> Don't are you gonna be like a goat? Are you gonna knock over my camera because the goaties like to knock over my camera? Right now you can see that's a pretty thick layer of just of poo and dirt. It's always a good idea when you're doing deep litter to come in, you know, once a week maybe and fluff everything. So, sorry, I thought I just saw a huge spider. I don't like spiders at all. I thought this project was done. I thought I was going to have to just burn the building down and just walk away. It was a chicken feather. Whew, that was close. <laughs> anyway, so I'm just coming here like once a week, fluff everything. By fluff, I mean just take the pitchfork and stir it all up, mix the dry in with the wet, and then add another layer. Depends on what I'm seeing. You gotta just watch it, keep dry material down. Just watch for your poop build up, see how that's going, and pretty much go from there. So I'm gonna break all this up first, I think. And then, for the love of all things, I seriously need a new, like a scoop shovel. When I was a kid, we used to call them coal shovels. I'm down to like a freaking snow shovel. But it works for serious. I need I need like a good metal, big fancy scoop shovel like this one. Make my life easier. So what you might think, I should be wearing a respirator. <clears throat> I've done worse things. That's a little space for a lot of chickens. Well, they don't care. They don't hang out in here. They sleep in here, so they need a spot to roost. And they come in here to lay eggs. That's it. Otherwise, they spend their days outside. They're clear down there now in the bottom corner looking for bugs. Uh, they eat a lot of grass. They eat a lot of bugs. Hey, I'm sorry, I'm watching Colonel. That's what they do all day, guys. They just roam around looking for bugs. 
The other thing we do for heat in the winter is we'll feed them a corn mix. They're just sitting in the roost. They come in, they eat their, their grain mix, which is mostly corn, and then they go sit on the roost. That forces their body to heat up, causing them energy to break that down. It causes their body temperature to rise. I, I could be wrong. I've never done a rectal test to see if they're warmer, you know, at midnight than they are when I brought them in here, but grain at night to heat up their bodies. I'm just saying from my experience, I've never had any issues with any chickens dying of the cold or having frostbite, and we've had some nasty winters. Can I get close to you? Are you gonna run off? <laughs> All right, you don't, okay. You don't have to give out the warning. That was a little bit of a warning shot. If he thought he was really in danger, he would make a call and every chicken in this yard would start lighting up with that same call. And then everybody heads towards the barn. So it's essentially them saying, hey, there's danger, run to the barn. It's kind of cool. Get back to what I was doing. You know me and my yapping. That's the compost pile there, and that's the coop clear up there. Okay, back. So, I had to go get a ladder, because I'm short. I'm not actually short. Because this up here, where these chickens have been roosting, to avoid the fox, and then this up here. So I built this shelf up here originally because I wanted to be able to store uh, food primarily and then any tools, accessories that we thought we might use to take care of the chickens. Uh, feeders, waters, extra stuff. But I regret every day that this shelf is here. That wall right there just separates the tool barn from this side. So I think what I'm gonna do is just take that wall out and move it right here. So this is straight up and down. That'll give me four feet of shelf on the tool barn side and eliminate a spot up here for the chickens to get up here to just poop. Occasionally they'll lay an egg up here. I grabbed a light too. Yeah, I feel like a Sam's Club commercial. Sam's Club, if you ever want to sponsor me, let me know. This is a cool little light from Sam's Club. It's got little handles, so you can use it like a lantern. It is bright as the sun. It also has a cool little feature. Flip these down. Got a little sideways handle. Use it as a flashlight. Baby feeder, eggs that you don't want to eat. We have no idea how long those have been up here. So essentially, I hate the shelf and I hate the fact that I got to scrape it off because it's disgusting. Winter is coming and I can let my garden grow up and I'm not happy about it. Believe me, it's like, it's been a busy year starting the YouTube channel. It's been amazing, but it takes time. You're looking at probably three times as long to do something. I probably would already be done with this if I wasn't shooting this video. I love shooting videos and I love that you guys watch them. We are at 230 subscribers as of today. So hopefully hopefully we'll hit that thousand by the end of the year. What can happen is I can I cannot put in a garden and the weeds can grow up. I can deal with that this fall. I can miss weed eating my fence and the weeds can grow up. I can mow the grass when it's extra long. What cannot, and what will not happen is not winterizing for the animal. Animal health first. Things that need to get done to support animal health for the winter will get done. Depending on the year in Ohio, November to March, at a, at a minimum November through February. Okay, well, December through February is definitely gonna suck. It's gonna be cold, whether or not it snows, whether or not it freezes, whether or not it freezes, rain, ices, is always to be determined, who knows? On a bad year, November through February into March, it's gonna be nasty. You know, two months doesn't seem like a terribly long amount of time, but when you're an animal that lives out outside in those conditions every single day for months on end. It would be a long time. It's cold, windy, and it would suck. So we're responsible for making sure they have clean, dry, warm environments. Think that's going to do today guys something came up so i gotta run into town we'll finish it tomorrow what's up guys welcome back to day two before anything can take place on day two obviously we had to already hi hello oh you're standing right on my foot chunky i mean you know you're like 80 pounds right good morning how are you do you want to say hi <laughs> We already uh, came over here this morning and took care of the girls made soap give you a little sneak peek of our christmas soap right now
I had to come over here and get a shovel to finish the chicken coop, so thought we'd say hi to the girls. Hi, Trouble. Okay, this is what we use for bedding. If I could find it in bulk like this, I would definitely do it because this is uh, like five bucks a bag, but I only use like four a year. Uh, check that. We do this twice a year. I'll clean it out in the spring. And then during the summer, I just put bedding down to keep it dry on top. I don't do it for heat or anything like that. That being said, I'll use four bags in the fall generally and then four bags in the, in the spring. So eight bags total a year. This is a compressed bale. So it says it's eight cubic feet inside this little bag because they smash it in there like that and you can see it stays pretty compact in there if you can fluff it up though Nicely coated floor. It takes up a lot of space. I wish I had built it a little smaller. The thing is, I said earlier in the video, like the adult chickens, they only come in here to lay eggs and roost at night. So if I'm gonna have chickens in here for a couple days to a couple weeks, I want them to have a decent amount of space because they're gonna live in here for, for a bit. All right guys, I'm gonna try to figure out the best way to do this. So this is a French black copper Moran. And she is gonna lay, you see that copper band right on her neck right there? See the copper feathers? And then these girls are all gonna lay a dark chocolate brown egg. These girls are sapphire olive eggers. And they're gonna lay a green egg. They are just gorgeous. I don't know if the camera's picking it up, so I'm just gonna tell you, this is like a blue-gray color. Legs are black and or gray. And they're just beautiful. Do you have green eyes? Looks like she has green eyes. All right, aim with your buddy. And then these girls are a prairie bluebell, and they lay a blue egg. She has green eyes too. These are actually coming all different colors, so you'll see when I pull the rest of them out. She's gray and white. She is gorgeous. You're okay, honey. You're okay. All right. Okay, see if I can just put the rest of them in here for you. This girl's a prairie bluebell too. You are gorgeous. You're very calm. What do you think? Man, I, I hope that color is coming through well on the on the video. I won't know until I see it. But oh, man, I can't tell you how gorgeous these things are. The gray is just so different. Quite beautiful. So that's it for these ladies. That's 18. They're gonna huddle up over there until they get comfortable. <laughs> oh. <laughs> so, you gotta laugh it up, chicken. I want this set right here and I missed and, and, and then just flipped out onto the ground. That's it for this one. I'm gonna go finish off my day mowing, probably wrapping some soap for this weekend show, clean up my mess, get these guys some food and water, and then uh, we'll see you back on the next one. Bye.